Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. All right, starting with the Tabernacle of David, all right, as well as the large multitude, the rest of the men, women, and children whom the Lord will, all right, have mercy on. All right. As always, the name of the God, the, 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 the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is Yahweh, Bahasham, in the name of Yahweh Shai, the name of the only begotten Son, the Most High, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahasham, in the name of Rahakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit, sent from on high, all right, so that we, the Israelites, can fulfill prophecy, because in the latter days, the Israelites, all right, will come back to the understanding of the names of the Father, all right, to call on him through the name of the Son, all right, the pure Hebrew language, the pure Hebrew names, all right, the name that was given unto Moses, the name that was called on by Adam, all right, the name that the Son of the Most High was given, you know, when he was born, all right, through his father, uh, Joseph and Mary, all right, that name is Yahweh Shai, and we've been returned to those names, all right, to call on in these latter days and receive the Holy Spirit so that we can go preach this word all right on to the next glory which is ultimately deliverance new bodies all right a beautiful ceremony on the chariots okay and then eventually new Jerusalem is gonna come down and set up the kingdom of heaven on earth all right we can't get sidetracked from the narrative of the Bible uh, through emotions when you deal with the scriptures the end game is that the Heavenly Father is going to set up his people under his only begotten son okay to run the earth in utter righteousness all right Yahweh Shai and the 144,000 will be all right the government body the fulfillment of the tabernacle of David all right and he that will sit on that throne as the scriptures foretell is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. That is a government, a governing body. And what I wanted to speak on is the process of how we will be delivered, okay? And then ultimately we're gonna come down and not only take down you heathen nations, but also purge out the rebels of our own people, you know? Which we're gonna go into all of these things and it may be in three parts. So within this first part, what I want to deal with is how we will be delivered, okay, and into what? What the scriptures call the chariots of salvation, all right? A lot of people are um, not, you know, as the scriptures say, we're fools for Hamashiach's sake. When you look up that word, uh, uh, fools, and then you go to the root word, it's dealing with the mysteries, What's been revealed unto the elect in these latter days, starting with the teachers, all right, who have the new song, are the mysteries of the will of the Most High through His Son. And in this world, as we preach these things, they're going to sound foolish. All right, now the world and what they're boasting in <laughs> is really foolish, but in righteousness, we're fools, all right, for proclaiming the truth of the mysteries of these scriptures. All right, so we're going to start here because as we preach this word, there's another glory coming uh, uh, ultimately to us. We're preaching for this very prophecy, for these very prophecies to be fulfilled so that we can be changed and delivered from this destruction that's coming to Babylon the Great. So as we start here in Matthew, the 24th chapter, in the 30th verse, it says, and then... And then after what? After tribulation on the earth. Okay? There's going to be a lot of hell that takes place on the earth. Okay? And the scriptures describe this tribulation as you read in verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Because of the great uh, smoke from nuclear war and fire. Alright? People are going to be confused. The wisdom of this world will be completely confounded. Okay, and the and the, and, and the rulers of this world will fully know. <laughs> okay, 
that it's over for them. Okay? Now, as you read verse 30, you know, while all of this chaos is taking place on the earth, what happens? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. You see that? As the scriptures tell you in Revelation, the first chapter, behold, he cometh with clouds. All right? And when you read the scriptures, Psalms 104, various scriptures, it, 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 the clouds are synonymous with the chariots. Okay? Makarab, the vehicles of the angels. So Yahweh Shai, the son of man, is going to appear <laughs> in the heavens. He's going to return from the heavens. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. You see? And they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. All right? And how is he going to return? Through the chariots of salvation. Let's get that in Habakkuk, the third chapter. Right? Habakkuk, the third chapter. Okay? This is describing the return of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. This was one of the questions Habakkuk had in the vision. It says, was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Because we know that the earth is going to shake and reel to and to and fro at the presence of Yahweh Shai. All right, and at the fall of Babylon. So we're going to have to be detached, right? It says, was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea? That thou didst ride upon thine horses in thy chariots of salvation? You see that? Chariots of salvation. Okay? That's the secret <laughs> chamber of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. All right? Thy bow was made quite naked according to the oath of the tribes. Because remember, there was an oath, there was a promise that the Heavenly Father made, all right, through Melchizedek, okay, to Abraham, okay, and then eventually Isaac, his seed, Jacob, and his seed. All right, and the Lord said he swore on himself. So as all of these people come with these different doctrines saying the Israelites are no longer are the only ones, that, you know, the Lord ain't dealing with Israel no more. There's this multi, you know, nationality covenant, which the multi -nation, uh, uh, nation covenant are the Israelites who are scattered throughout all of these different nations. And the Heavenly Father is going to send his son to gather this, his elect, the remnant from these different nations being the, the the main nation being babylon the great the main deliverance okay it says even thy words say la thou didst cleave to the earth with rivers so it's going to be a mess but as you can see the way that the heavenly father is going to send his son is upon the chariots of salvation as the scriptures say behold he cometh with clouds now as we go back here to the book of uh, Matthew because we have to do this thing line upon line precept upon precept it says and then shall there, there shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn why because it's going to be absolute chaos and they shall all see <laughs> the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory He's going to be on a gigantic chariot, as you can read that in 2nd Edges, the 13th chapter. It says, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, even from one end of heaven to the other. And that's the promise. It's always been promised that he's going to gather his elect of the nation of Israel from wherever they may be. All right, from the four winds of heaven even unto the other all right this narrative can also be found in revelation the 11 chapters various scriptures i'm just going to hit a few all right this is revelation the uh 11th chapter now when you start at eight it speaks of how the dead bodies of the israelites all right will lie in this great city which spiritually is called sodom in egypt this is the final captivity babylon the great okay where also our Lord was crucified. The ways of the Messiah were exed out manhood, righteousness, order. Okay? And the Israelites were in a dead state. All right? And then all of these nations, you know, they, they made money off us. They mocked us. You know, we were getting beat. We were getting traded. 
that's get for gifts and all sorts of things, man. Because they finally got Israel where they wanted them. And they mocked us, sent gifts to one another because we were in that dead state. All right. But after three days and a half, verse 11. After three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. All right. Which is the Holy Spirit. All right. The comforter sent from on high so that we can do what? What we're doing. We're preaching this word. We're, we're coming back to obedience. All right. It starts with us acknowledging our offense. All right. And calling on the names of Yahweh Bashim Shai to forgive us. So we've repented. That's why you see everything moving so fast because the Israelites, all right, have awakened. And now you have the prophets out speaking things into existence. So things are moving fast. This, this, this narrative links right up with Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, all right, which also deals with the Heavenly Father sending his son right, and gathering us out of all of these nations and placing us back. All right, into that promised land. Now it says, and after three days, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood up on their feet, and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. Okay, and this is us out preaching this word, all of these camps popping up. Okay, and the heathen are like, what the hell? All right, but what does this lead to? Verse 12, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying, come, saying to them, come up hither. See that? And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So what we see written here is that the Israelites, after preaching this word, after waking up, after the great awakening, after the word will be preached, there's going to come a point where the Heavenly Father is going to send his son in a big, gigantic chariot of salvation and say, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. All right, that bird is back. Hey, Shalom. Peace is coming. Peace is coming, man. Bird always comes when I do my lessons, man. <laughs> and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Okay? And the cloud we know is synonymous with the chariots. When you get uh, Psalms 104, as a matter of fact, let me just real quick. Just to show you the link. <clears throat> this is uh, Psalms 104 and 1. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, O Yahweh, my God. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who covereth thyself with light as with a garment, who stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain. Who led the beings of his chambers and the waters, who make it the clouds, his chariot. All right. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. And when you go to chariot in the scriptures, okay. Ra Ka Wab. All right. It says chariot, but then when you go to the root word, okay, Rakab. Okay. A mount, a ride, to mount, ride, and sit, to ride, to be riding, okay? So just as the heathen have their aircraft, just as the heathen, you know, ha you know have their things on the left hand, the Most High is going to send his son back riding a big, gigantic, all right, chariot to do what? Call the Israelites out of these different nations to be changed, all right, real quick, let's get the book of First Thessalonians 4 and 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Because you have those who, uh, who've passed away. All right, now as a matter of fact, I start at 13. It says, but I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not as others which have no hope. All right, we, we, we have to understand that there is no such thing as death. And you have particular members of the 144 who won't be on the earth when the Heavenly Father sends his son, but they'll be raised up already. As the scriptures say in Revelation, the 14th chapter, all right, blessed be the dead which die in Yahweh Bashmiah and Shai, 
their works do follow them. So they will be placed in their rank if they're not on the earth at the time that Yahweh Shai returns. Everything will be placed back in his order. So we, we can't be ignorant concerning those who pass away in the, in the word of the Lord. Don't sorrow about that because we have the hope of the true scriptures. For if we believe that Yahweh Shai died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Yahweh Shai will God bring with him. When you read 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, it gives you the order. It's going to be Yahweh Shai and the first fruits. All right, and after that, what's that? What's, what's that? The large multitude, the rest of the men, women, and children. And you had a guy say that in the kingdom of heaven, there's going to be just the amount of men as it is women. No, there's going to be more women than there is men, even of those who are saved. There's going to be more women that are saved than men. So that large multitude is going to be filled, all right, with, 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 with uh, you know, the rest of the men, women, and children whom the Lord is going to have mercy on. Okay, as a matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 15, okay, in 22, For as in Adam all die, even so in Hamashiach all shall be made alive. Okay, the Lord is going to set that government up, all right, that was supposed to be started with Adam, but we fell because of the flesh, because of sin, following after the serpent. Eve did that first, and Adam did it as well. So what happened? Death came. But under Yahweh Shai, that government is going to be set up, all right, on the earth in righteousness with new bodies. So all are going to be made alive, all right, in the second Adam. It says, but every man in his own order, and there's going to be order and rank in the kingdom of heaven. Hamashiach, the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Mashiach said it's coming. All right. The first fruits we know are the 144,000. All right. Those who are what? More excellent in rank amongst the body. Okay. So, just to show you a parquet. Eh? A parquet. Eh? Just go to the point, person superior in excellence to others of the same class. And we know this very word is used to describe the 144,000. All right. James 1 and 18, of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creature. All right. And then Revelation 14 and 4, as it described the 144,000, it, it says that they are the first fruits. So that's the order of deliverance. But I didn't want to go too deep into that. Uh, that's another lesson for another time. Second Thessalonians 4. Okay. In 14, for if we believe that Yahweh Shah died and rose again, okay, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh Shah will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Okay? They're going to get their rank. They're going to receive their rank and authority when Yahweh Shah returns either way. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of, of God. And the dead and Hamashiach shall rise first. And we just read about that great voice. You know, what did it say in Revelation 11? Come up hither. What did it say in uh, Matthew 24? Okay. It says what? He's going to send uh, uh, his son with the shout of like an angel, man. So we're reading all of these same scriptures that, that link up. And with the trump of God and the dead in Hamashiach shall raise first. Okay. Because when Yahweh Shah returns, they're already going to be up there. They're already going to have the new bodies. Then we which are alive and remain, whatever situation we may be in, as the scriptures say, we're going to be scarcely saved, shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall ever be with the Lord. I'm going to get new bodies. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So what we've just done is show you and link to you that the Israelites will be caught up into the chariots of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, you can read more about that in Second Edges, the uh, 13th chapter, about because they're going to have a war. They're going to fight. These heathen are going to fight the second coming. 
They don't want us to be changed and delivered. They're going to be like, hell no, nah, but they can't stop it. Okay, so the Lord is going to send his son to call us up. Okay, and what's going to happen as we're called up is explained here in 1 Corinthians. All right, uh, I just start at the 51st chapter. Okay, because he's talking about how we're going to get new bodies. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 15 and 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. As it says in 1 John, the third chapter, we know that we're going to have new bodies, but we know not what we shall be. But when we know that when we see him, we shall be like him. So we're going to receive spiritual bodies when we get changed up, when we get beamed up. Okay? Both men, women, and child will receive, you know, who, those who are delivered. Now, there's going to be order to that you know like a, a you know a woman won't be able to do what one of the 144,000 men do you know even those men who are delivered you know of that large multitude they won't have the rank and authority of the 144,000 but guess what you're going to receive a new body the laws will be written in you you're going to have spiritual capabilities okay but the tabernacle of David as the scriptures say will be as God, be on a whole nother level. So behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. All right? And the nigga will get mad at that. You know, he instead of rejoicing that he's going to receive a new body, the laws written in him, have his heart's desire, he wants to argue about the, 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 the way that the Heavenly Father set up his rank in a woman too. She wants to argue about that. You know, <laughs> it says in a moment, so it says we shall be changed. We're not all going to die, you know, but we're going to be changed. See, when a lot of people, these Christians, when they hear about the kingdom coming or the return, all they think about is death. So what do they do? They automatically reject it. Uh -uh, I'm not ready. Well, when Yahweh Shah returns, <laughs> He's 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 returning to do something. That's perfect his people, starting with the 144,000. That remnant, okay, going to get the victory and we're going to be changed. Have a ceremony which we'll show you, and then we're going to come down and set up rank and order the government of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai on the earth. And that's what I wanted to get into, but I wanted to start with this part. And then I want to get into us coming down. So we're dealing with us being beamed up in this one. Okay. Because this is what the scripture says, man. What does it say in uh, Isaiah, the uh, 31st chapter? You know, real quick. Isaiah 31. And five, as birds flying, so will Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, defend Jerusalem. Defending also he will deliver it and passing over he will preserve it. There's a remnant that will be passed over. Just like in the Passover, you had to have the blood over your doorpost, which exempt you from being visited by that death angel. All right. Well, if that blood, if we're covered under that blood of Yahawashai, we will be passed over, but in a whole nother fashion. You know? And the, the, the first Egypt, you know, only Moses was able to go up to the mount and see the glory and all of that. Well, we're all now going to be put in there. <laughs> you know, we're going to be up there in that chariot. Okay, with new bodies, man. So the Lord is going to deliver us as birds flying. Okay, so within that, we're going to be changed. Let's look up the word for changed in the scriptures. Right, and scriptures say comfort one another with these words, right? Allah, so to change, to exchange one thing for another, to transform. So we're going to put off this mortal flesh and be brought into immortality. Okay, bodies that don't die, no sickness, no death, no crying, no mourning, none of that. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Now we keep hearing about this trump. Okay? 
What does it say in Matthew 24? A trump. What does it say in Revelation 11? A voice saying, come up hither. So I would, I would I mean, just imagine what that sound is going to be. <laughs> we know it's going to be in Hebrew, and it's only the elect are going to hear that come up hither because everybody ain't welcome. Not even all Israel are going to be beamed up. Okay? So in a moment... In the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Incorruptible means no death. And see, this is what you Israelites and you Christian Israelites want to incorporate and add the heathen into. No heathen will have this blessing. This blessing is only for the Israelites. No matter where they be, if they are of that number, okay, starting with those who are already raised up, who may have died or, or however, whatever reason they're not on the earth at that time that Yahweh shall return. And then those who are on the earth to beamed up, it's all for Israel. Okay, and we shall be changed, which ultimately for this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the, the saying that is written in Isaiah, all right, the 25th chapter, showing you that the, the, the both, you know, the, the Old and New Testament are used, man. You see, Paul was quoting the law, the prophets, the whole time he was on the scene, you all just don't understand because the Lord didn't open up to you the truth of what the mystery of the scriptures is about. So what is the saying? Death is swallowed up in victory. Okay, meaning we're no longer going to have to deal with hell being separated from our power, sin, the flesh, mortal thoughts, man against woman, woman against man. Divided households, drugs, none of that will matter at this point. We will have the victory over these things. The microchip, the image of the beast. We're going to swallow up death. We're going to fully, at this point, have come overcome death. Okay? Through a resurrection in the heavens. See? Then we're going to come down. It doesn't stop there. That's what this whole series is going to be about. Us being delivered into those chariots, you know, the great rejoicing and celebration, okay? <laughs> and then we coming down to purge out you rebels and to take down you heathen nations. This is all in the scriptures, man. So then should be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory, <laughs> O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Because that's how the left hand was able to win since the garden was through sin. But now that the laws are going to be written in us, there's no victory for these heathen. There's no, no way that they can separate us from our power at this point. See? So, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, which separated us from our power. The strength of sin is the law, but thanks be to God, which gives us victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, the second Adam. See, the first Adam failed, okay? Solomon failed, all right? But Yahweh Shai got it right, you see? And under him, the throne of David will be established on the earth, okay? So we're going to rule the earth with these new bodies, okay? When you read about the new bodies, we know that there's hands, you know, there's a head. So even when Yahweh was saw in his glorified state, it was likened unto the Son of Man. Feet, hands, you know, garment, all right? But it's a glorified body. So we know how, somewhat of how they're going to look, but we don't know the, the operations. We don't know how reproduction is going to be at that point. We don't know how, you know, and, and when we're on that chariot, <laughs> we're going to be crowned man 
anyway, we're going to get to that in just a minute. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain, all right, in Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So, we're going to be beamed up and changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. All right, as the scriptures say, it's going to say, come up hither. See, come up hither. This is going to be the second Passover. And we're going to be beamed up into those chariots. Go back here to Revelation 11. Do you believe this? Revelation 11 and 12, after we receive the Holy Spirit and we'll preach all right and they heard revelation 11 and 12 and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them come up hither and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them okay showing you there's still going to be people on earth they're not going to be in hell they're going to be watching the deliverance could you imagine that <laughs> and in the same hour there was a great earthquake okay because what's going to happen on the earth What's synonymous with the deliverance of the elect? The end of Esau's world, which starts with the destruction of Babylon the Great. Okay? So there's going to be a great earthquake, and a tenth part of the city fell. When you go to America's zip code, okay, uh, uh, system, it starts with zero, okay, and it goes all the way up to nine, all right? If you go from right to left, all right? looking at that BS map, but you go right to left, okay, it's it's zero to nine. That's the tenth part of the city. Babylon the Great will be ultimately engulfed in fire, okay? And the Lord said he's going to deliver us from the land of the north and from the cities where we be scattered. That's in Jeremiah the 16th chapter, which eventually that's going to come out in this series of... Uh, you know, because this is all based on a vision, man. You know, I spoke with the brothers, you know, a few brothers about it. You know, but just imagine this. You know, as we're on that chariot, <laughs> you know, seeing this all happen. And in and, and the earthquake where the slain of men, 7,000, which we know seven is a complete number. Because the Lord said he has a sacrifice in the land. This is a sacrifice. This is an altar. You know, the Lord had to sacrifice in Basra. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And the third woe is World War Three Armageddon, which we're going to be delivered out of that. All right? And as the scriptures say, Isaiah 26 and 20, Come, my people, Enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. So this is like the ark. This is like unto the ark. Now we know we're not going to get on the chariot and shut the door. But this is giving you a, a, a mindset of what's going to happen. You see, we're going to enter into the chambers. We're going to enter into those chariots. Which is going to be likened unto what? The ark. <laughs> Only eight souls got on that ark, okay? And on this ark will be, all right, uh, uh, the, the 144,000 and that large multitude. This is the glory we have coming. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. You see? For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, the earth also shall, shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Because for a while, wicked people were able to just continue. Well, there's a great destruction coming to those people. And we know the elites, which is another part of this lesson. The elites, they won't be destroyed at this time. They're going to still be in those bunkers. So, yeah, there is a lot of people that are going to be destroyed, but... Everybody's not going to die. Not even all Israel will be uh, uh, beamed up into that chair. There's still going to be Israelites wiggling around the earth. All right? So we're going to hide ourselves in those chambers, all right, for a little moment until the indignation, which is the destruction of the Heavenly Father, all right, be overpassed. 
All right. So, and there's more scriptures, right? But let's go into <laughs> that ceremony. What's going to happen when we get beamed up? All right. We're going to get new bodies. Hey, and what does the scripture say? We're going to sip wine with Yahweh. As a matter of fact, Matthew 26 and 29. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of this vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Okay? So when we get beamed up, it's going to be a party in righteousness, a ceremony. We're going to be crowned. We'll get into all of that. It says... A scene from heaven, a scene of heaven. Because everybody talks about heaven, all right? But nobody wants to go into what the scriptures say about how all of these things are going to uh, be set up, man. So Revelation 15 and 1, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the last seven plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. Okay? And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. So he's seeing pretty much the elect on that chariot. And when you look down, they're looking at what, what you know as the ozone. But that shows you that the chariot is going to be like a, a, a crystal clear. We're going to be able to look down <laughs> at the destruction. As a matter of fact, what does Psalms 91 say? Psalms 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And the secret place starts with this word being placed in our, our, our minds to go out and preach, to believe. Okay? The, the scriptures say, the, uh, 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 I will send unto you the spirit of truth which the world cannot receive. It's a secret from them. I will say of Yahweh, he is my refuge and my fortress in God. Uh, my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of the pestilence, all of the hell, the destruction. Okay. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Those are those chariots. And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. We're going to be good. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but none all right, of it shall come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. You see that? Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. We're not going to have these eyes either. It's going to be a whole new body, a whole new experience. <laughs> you know? And we're going to see the reward of the wicked from the chariot. Just like the Rothschilds, they say, as 9-11 took place. All right, they, 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 they watched it from, you know, the, the different suites and all that. Well, we're going to have that in a whole nother way in righteousness. You know? Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And before we're beamed up on the earth, they say we're going to be eaten. I don't know how. I don't know how that's going to take place, but it said we're going to be good. We're reading it. All of the plagues and the stuff that's happening, there's going to be a point where the Lord has a sure, you know, a, a, a hedge over his people. No matter what situation they be in, we're going to be laughing. People, you know, the enemy may have us somewhere. Who, who knows? But we're going to we're going to start shining. We're going to start smiling and eventually he'll deliver us, man. 
for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways, to keep us from getting the chip, to keep us from getting vaccinated, to keep to keep us from all of the devil's plans. The angels are going to have charge over us. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. You see, thou shalt tread upon a lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Who's the dragon? That old serpent, man, because he set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he have known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble to deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So the names are very important. So as we are beamed up, what did John the Revelator see in Revelation the 15th chapter? And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire in them that had gotten victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark. And over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. So we're going to be listening to music. Okay. Praising the Lord. But look, we're going to have victory over the beast. And over his image. And over his mark. And over the number of his name. The 666, which he wants to put that name on you. Standing on the sea of glass, having the harps of God in their hand, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, kings of the saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. You see? And after that I looked and behold the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. Meaning those laws are going to be put inside of us. You see? And that temple is headed by Yahawashai in the heavens. Remember uh, 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 Moses saw the tabernacle in heaven. You know, and he based that tabernacle and made a tabernacle on earth you know solomon also made one which david gave him the blueprint on how to make it but it was based upon what he saw in the heavens so we're going to be eye to eye with that temple <laughs> you know and we're going to we're going to be placing our, our our rank and order and everything and it's going to be a glorious okay a glorious uh uh, uh ceremony which is described in second entrance to second chapter because you got to think we're going to be beamed up now it says hide thyself as for a little moment right so we're going to be on the chariot so how long will that be how long will that be for the people on earth before we come down because we ain't going to just have no small ceremony time will be different to us so that that's something to think about you have to imagine these things. You have to put yourself there. As we're on these chariots, rejoicing, getting crowned as we're getting ready to read. What, what You know, on earth is going to be total chaos. People are going to be in the bunkers. You know, the scavengers, you know, people, you know, it's going to be crazy. They're going to see us on the, they're going to see the chariot in the sky. You know, reporting, you know, because we, we, let's get this in Revelation 18. Revelation 18 chapter. After America's destroyed. It says in one day, <laughs> you know, this is going to be utterly born, burned. Revelation 18 and 9, And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off, showing you there's still going to be people alive. See? Why ain't they in hell? 
If they love Babylon, shouldn't they be in hell? No, they're going to be alive on earth, witnessing hell. Okay? Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And all the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn for her. No man buyeth her merchandise anymore. And it goes into what they had. And what did they have? Slaves, the souls of men. See? Basically because nobody buyeth her merchandise anymore. See? <laughs> and what did they buy? Fine linen, purple, silk. America is the, the biggest consumer that's why they have all of these ports they trade by sea these heathen are eating off of america man you know frankincense showing you that you know america uh, uh is babylon the great and it's nowhere in the middle east because if it was in the middle east they wouldn't have to buy frankincense because frankincense all right though that trees the buswellia tree ultimately is prominent in the middle east all right, close to Iraq and different places like that is where you'll find the best frankincense trees. That's why Babylon, America has to buy those things, showing you that Babylon is not in the Middle East. This Babylon, all right now, the original Babylon, all right, is near Iraq and all of that, all right? But this Babylon, okay, is where here in America that we're reading about. So they're going to be mourning and weeping and wailing and crying for the destruction of this place because damn, they needed this to eat, right? But what we going to be doing? Verse 20, rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. See? So as we're beamed up here, you know, how long are these nations going to see us, you know, see that chariot and and and, and, and you know, different other chair. How long are we going to be up there doing this? Second address 2 and 35. Be ready to the reward of your kingdom for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Flee the shadow of this world. Receive with joyfulness. All right. The joyfulness of your glory. I testify of my savior openly. You see. Received. The gift that is given you and be glad giving thanks unto him that led you into the heavenly kingdom arise up and stand behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the lord which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments of the lord now what is that number let's get revelation the seventh chapter to gain understanding on that Revelation, the seventh chapter, gives you that number. See? Gives you that number. The 144,000, which is the tabernacle of David. All right? And we know Yahweh is going to sit on the throne of David. Okay? That's the governing body, the priest after the, mortar, the order of Malak Tazadak, Melchizedek. But after that, verse 9 says, And this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude. Right, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, all right, stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes with palms in their hands. So we know there's 144,000 and a large multitude, all right, of kindred, which ultimately, when you look up the word kindred, okay, Philo or Fula is what? Give me one second while it loads. See here. Fula, a tribe in the New Testament, all persons descending from one of the twelve sons of the patriarch Jacob. Because we're, we were scattered. But as you read Jeremiah 16, I'm 
Man, Jeremiah 16. Make you want to read the whole thing reading that. And 14, therefore, the, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt. Remember, he's going to pass over us again. But we're no longer going to speak of the old Passover. The new Passover will be celebrated, in which, all right, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, Babylon the great, and from all the lands whither he have driven them, and I will bring them again into the land that I have given unto their fathers. So the Lord is going to gather us out of all these nations. Okay. Uh, Ezekiel 37. Well, I'll start at 36 and then jump to 37. Hit these points real quick. Ezekiel 36. Okay. Because what did he say? And I scattered them among the heathen, verse 19, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way, according to their doings, I judged them. See, we were among the heathen going off, but what is he going to do? Verse 24, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land. Ezekiel 37. All right. Let's see here. Ezekiel 37. As a matter of fact, I'll just go to. Uh, and 21 and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone and I will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. So as you read this. In Revelation, the seventh chapter, this narrative, all right, stands with what we teach, that these are all Israelites. It just starts with the 144,000, which will be the government, the governing body, the government, tabernacle of David, all right? But then you have that large multitude, okay? So as we're gathered in the heavens, there's going to be a great ceremony, Family reunion. We're going to have music. We're going to have wine. You see? Now here it is. Yahweh Shai is going to have a new body, right? He's going to be in his glorified heavenly state. But he said, I'm going to drink wine with you in my kingdom. So for you who all say we're not going to have the same functions as we do with these bodies, with those new bodies, right there cut you. However, we can't show you, we can't tell you exactly what it's going to be like, how it's going to look, what it's going to feel like. But I just know it's going to be an upgrade from this. Okay? Reproduction, all right, marriages, all of those things will be, but they will be upgraded. And it's going to be different from this way. But it will be for our pleasure, but ultimately for the pleasure of Yahweh Bashim Yahshah to make us one of the greatest nations, or the greatest nation, Salakia. Salakia, that was Satan. The greatest nation, biggest and greatest nation ever on earth, man. So let's let's read that again. Verse 40, 2nd Edges 2, Take thy number, O Sion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. All right? Written in the book of life. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. See? He's going to finally set up you know, his people in righteousness on the earth, man. Adam was supposed to do it, you know, but we failed because of Eve and Adam, you know, they fell. Then you go to Solomon. That was all 12 tribes gathered together, the throne of David established on earth. But guess what? He sinned. The kingdom was rent and we've been scattered ever since. So now he's finally going to do what he intended to do with this people under his son forever. In a more glorified state with the laws written in them to where we never fail again. All right. Beseech. All right. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. You see? <laughs> hallowed means holy, set apart. 
and they were called from the beginning. What does the scripture say? The Lord have chosen thee from the foundation of the earth. I, Edra, saw upon the Mount Sinai a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. This is that great okay, uh, family reunion taking place on the chariot. See? And they all praised the Lord with songs. Could you imagine that? And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature. So that shows you the heavenly bodies. He's still likened to the son of man, but it's an upgrade. You see? A young man of a high stature, taller than the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set a crown and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? And he answered and said to me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and have put on the immortal and have confessed the name of God. <laughs> now are they crowned and receive palms. Palms represent victory. The palm tree. All right. When you see a city with a bunch of palm trees, which ironically, I got a picture of palm trees right in front of me. On my wall. And in, I mean, I've been had this picture for years and it never set with me that it's palm trees and i'm sitting here looking at it right now anybody who's been in my studio it's a you know the picture above the keyboard you know damn palm trees <laughs> it just that you, know, you when palm trees represent you're in your rest you have a victory you're good when you go on a vacation from your job and you sitting in, on the beach and you see all those palm trees what do you I mean, you ain't thinking about your damn job. You ain't thinking about them calls you got to return. Okay. You soaking them hard ass feet. Chilling. Drinking pina colada or something. Well, we, we're going to have a vacation forever. See that? Bro, we're going to be crowned by the son of the most high. In the heavens. Then we go come down. Then I said unto the angel, What young person is it that crowned them and giveth them palms in their palms in their hand? So he answered and said unto me, Is the Son of God? Wait a minute. This is in the Apocrypha. This is what they would say. This is the Old Testament. It is the Son of God whom they have confessed in the world. Then begin I to greatly commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Because what we're doing under Yahweh Shai's sacrifice is a sacrifice that's going to lead to all our people, all right, being set up, you know, starting with that remnant. Then I began to, to, to greatly commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. So for you brothers... Who are out on the highways and the byways. No matter how many people are watching your videos. No matter what you're going through. What you're doing is the, the, the most manliest. Alright. The, 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 the best thing going man. Nobody understands it. Everybody thinks we're crazy as hell. But this is what we're ultimately fighting for. Then the angel said unto me. Go thy way and tell my people. What manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord thou hast seen. So this is why we're doing these videos. All right. Now we know New Jerusalem. Will be beautified. All right. <laughs> now, as we know, we're going to be beamed up. Okay. There's going to come a point here, Revelation 21 and 2, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, new bodies coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. What did the tabernacle represent? The order of the heavenly father. So we're, we're not going to need a physical tabernacle or a physical temple not that we won't have you know dwelling places and, and buildings and stuff like that and castles and you know our heart's desire but we won't have a place where we need to go to offer up sacrifice to have that access 
to the, 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 the heavens, man. All right. The laws will be in us. All will know the Lord. We won't have to teach anymore. We're not going to come down from the chariot and go back to the highways and the byways and, and, and teach. No, we're coming down to set up order. And that's going to be part two of this whole vision. You see? Now, when we're on that chariot, too, one thing that I uh, remember seeing in that vision is that we uh, uh, were praising the Lord for all of his creation, man. See? Every every uh, uh, point, everything he created, basically, we, 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 you know, we sat there and um, praised it. You know, the worm, the grass, the, 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 you know, the sun, the moon, the trees, the, you know, all of his creation. And one thing I noticed in this vision when I had that is that we didn't look at time the same, like. Because you'll think right now in this flesh, praising every creature of the Lord will take forever. Well, in that time, we weren't worried about time. Time was different for us. We, 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 it was a, we had nothing but time. See, there's no such thing as 15 minutes late. See, in the kingdom of heaven, we'll be where we need to be when we need to be there. Time will have changed for us. So we're not going to be in the, in, on those chariots. You know, in that great celebration, you know, like, damn, this is taking forever. No. There's going to be a great family reunion. The the elect are going to be crowned for their, their, their sacrifice. It's going to be praising. It's going to be a beautiful thing. We're going to party. We go. But my thing is, how long, how long will that be for the people on the earth? that we are up there, you know? But we know that eventually, all right, New Jerusalem, ain't we ain't going to stay up there forever, you know? We're not going to be up there, you know, procreating and, and, and worrying about this and that. No, we're going to be up there to be glorified, have a family reunion. Then we're going to come down on the earth, okay, and set up order and i heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of god is with men and he will deal with them and they shall be his people and god himself shall be with them and be their god showing you that new jerusalem starts with what the men of the lord the tabernacle of david who will be of a whole nother fashion see as a matter of fact we can end it off here and then the next edition, we're going to go into what we're going to do when we come down on the earth. See? <laughs> and that goes into purging out the rebels and taking you heathen down. Zechariah 12 and 8. In that day shall the Lord of hosts defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. Okay? And the house of David shall be as God. As the angel of the Lord is before them. Because remember, there's going to be rank in the kingdom of heaven. Now, let's prove that real quick. Matthew 5 and 19. Hold up. It says, Whoso there shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men to do so he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven shouldn't he be in hell but whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven now when you go to this word least hold up shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven because we know eventually those rebels are going to be purged out but they're going to come back so least it says just get to the point an amount of management of affairs see that the 144 all right and even that large multitude are going to be they're going to have more of a portion under yahweh shai right it says in authority so you're going to be least in authority of the commandments because what's going to happen when we go out 
is that the law is going to go forth. We're going to implement the law, statutes, and commandments under our government. Our government will be established. We're going to be placed back in that land. We'll set up shop. Okay? It says, in rank and excellence. Now, who's first in rank according to the scriptures where we just read? The 144. Okay? So, the, 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 the you know, you're going to have rank in the kingdom of heaven man and it's going to be respected it's going to be we ain't going to have the mind frame we have here to where we're going to be bucking up it's all going to be a beautiful family and everything's going to be good you know even if i'm not of the 144 under yahweh shah i'm going to hold those men if i make it as one of the large multitude lord willing i do you know i'm going to see you know the body of the 144 be set in their rank and i'm going to cheer them on man you know, now the fight is to be one of those, but we understand that not everybody is going to be of that number. That's for the Heavenly Father to set up. So with that, um, I'm going to just leave it there. And Lord willing, in the next installment, we will get into New Jerusalem coming down from heaven, starting with the purging of the rebels and then the enslavement of the heathen. Shalom.